So in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and 1 Timothy chapter 4, the Bible says that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. So in the last days we are to realize as we're getting closer to the tribulation that the devil is moving even more than ever before. So we are to get a little bit of a gist of what's going on so that we don't fall into his devices. One of the things in the end time which is going to be important is concerning the rapture. And if you look at Matthew chapter 24 verse 34, it's going to tell you on how quick the rapture is approaching. Now before I continue teaching the subject, I want to say one thing. I do not believe in date setting like Harold Camping and a lot of other people were doing. They especially did that with September 23rd and I've gotten a lot of comments back of people who got messed up because of that. So that's pretty bad. So I don't believe in that. I don't believe in date setting to a specific day and time and saying this is the day of the rapture. However, I do believe in in a giving an approximate timetable showing how close we are, how imminent the rapture is. The reason why is this is because by knowing that, we don't get lazy in our tails right. and realize, hey, the Lord's coming soon and the devil is about to set up his one world government. So, hey, it's not a time to clown around. Let's get to work. Amen. Let's get to work. But we live in America. In America, it's supposed to be a time to clown around. You know, it's supposed to be a time to live up to the worldly standards and do whatever you want. So God taught them a lesson. He elected Donald Trump and they're like saying, this is the end of the world. And all these liberals are gnashing their teeth saying, oh, we're going to die. We're going to die. We got to do something to change society. You know, Lord had to do that to teach them something. Anyways, Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. All right. Sometimes I'm glad the Lord elected Barack Obama. The Lord elected Donald Trump. The Lord does that. You know why? Because America got what they deserved. Mm -hmm. America, the nation, problem is, is that they're always comfortable. Comfortable, comfortable. Not doing something for Jesus. All right, let's look at Matthew chapter 24. We will read verse 34. The Bible says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. So this is something very interesting that you want to know. If you want to know about the rapture happening soon, this is the verse. This is the standard you're going to find. It says, this generation is not going to pass till all these things be fulfilled. Till all what things? All what things is, you read all of chapter 24, is what? It's about the tribulation. Matthew 24 talks everything about the tribulation. It also talks about the second advent. Now what's very interesting about this passage is that this generation will live to see this. Alright, now whatever this generation is, it shows that we're pretty close. It's not a time to clown around. Now what is this generation? You read verse 32. That's the key. Verse 32 through 33. The Bible says in verse 32, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So whatever this fig tree is, this fig tree is blossoming, putting forth what? Its leaves. It's blossoming. When this thing is blossoming, what happens? This verse says, When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. Then, verse 30, 33, So likewise, meaning verse 32, when this happens, in similitude what? When ye shall see all these things. So he's saying that you will see all these things on Matthew 24, the tribulation, all of them. See all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Wow. So what is this? It's going to be near the second advent. It's going to be near the end times. This generation is going to see it. So here's a question. What is this fig tree putting forth the leaves? Look at Jeremiah chapter 24. Jeremiah chapter 24. 
major Bible scholars. So it's not just Bible-believing teachers and preachers. It's even a lot of eschatology scholars actually believe and teach in this. Mainstream Christianity knows this, actually. Mainstream. So this is not something that's just my teaching. They're going to believe it's referring to... And I'm not going to tell you. We're going to read, all right? Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 24. We will read verse 2 all the way down to verse 6. The Bible says, One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe. And the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Okay, so we see right here a basket of figs. One is naughty, and the other one is ripe. All right, it's about to put forth the leaves. Verse 3, Then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, What? Figs. The good figs. Okay, so remember that fig? Who is that fig likened to? When you read the Bible, you're going to find out who that fig tree is likened to. Let's keep reading. Figs, the good figs, very good. And the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, the figs that's about ripe, right? That's ripe, about to put forth the leaves, is what? Keep reading. It says right here, These good figs, so will I acknowledge them, who are what? That are carried away <laughs> captive, carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place, into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. Okay, so that's the nation of Israel. So this nation of Israel, what happened? They were scattered. The nation of Israel was scattered, and they lost their nation ever since Babylon took it over. But what happens to this nation of Israel? Keep reading. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will what? Bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down. And I will plant them and not pluck them up. So look at this. The nation of Israel it lost its nation ever since what? The fall of Babylon. And ever since Babylon, excuse me, not the fall of Babylon, the Babylonian conquest. So Israel's fall from Babylon. When they fell from Babylon, History knows this. History knows that the nation of Israel never had its nation for thousands of years. They were wandering. They were scattered all over the earth. The Jews were everywhere. But then what happened? They were gathered together as a nation. God promised He would gather them together, right? At that verse. He says when He gathers them together, and we know the nation of Israel was gathered together somewhere between 1947 to 1948. But I'll just put 1948 since that's the official day. So in 1948, that's when Israel became a nation again. Why? Because God promised the people who were scattered are going to be the people who are gathered and, replace, and restore their nation. And that was that restoration of the nation of Israel is that fig tree putting forth its leaf. Okay, if that happened in 1948, then the question is this, what is this, right? If we find out what this is, then we see how close it is. So there are several passages. Look at Psalms chapter 90. Psalms chapter 90. So, <laughs> we're going to look at the September 23rd one first. This is why these people came up with September 23rd. It's because of this one. But I'm going to warn you to not date set it. You know why? Because what you're going to find out is this. We don't know how long this is. All right? Because they look at only one verse in the Bible, like amateurs do, then they automatically date set the rapture. You're not a Bible believer if you only pick and choose verses. You've got to look at all the verses. So this generation in the Bible, it can vary to several things. All right, so we're going to look at Psalms chapter 90, and we're going to look at verse 10. The Bible shows that a generation can be 70 years. All right, Psalms chapter 90, and we will read verse 10. The days of our years are three score and ten. So here we see a generation right here that's what? 70 years. So when you take 1948, now the September 23rd people did 1947. That's how they did it. So it could be one year off, but we don't know. Anyways, 
we add 70 years right here, what's it going to total to? So 8, 11, 10, 2018. Pretty close. But then they put 1947, so that's why they, they want to make it 2017 for September 23rd. Anyway, let's forget that point. All right, so a generation can be 70 years. And you think that you can be lazy for Jesus Christ after that. <laughs> okay, now let's look at verse 10, though. Keep reading. It can be 70 years, or keep reading verse 10. And if by reason of strength... So by reason of strength, they can last a little longer. They be what? They be what? Four score years. So it may not be 70 years. It could be what? It could be plus 80 years. So 1948 plus 80. So it could be, it could be 2028. It could be that year. So it can be a generation can be 70 years, a generation can be 80 years, or let's look at Genesis 15. Genesis 15. Look, whatever how long it is, the generation, it doesn't change the fact you better get to work right now. Okay, it's really soon. It doesn't change that fact. Look at Genesis chapter 15. We will read verse 13. The Bible says. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. So God is telling Abram, Okay, your nation, the Israelites, the Jews, they're going to be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. When did they sojourn in a land that were strangers? That's Egypt. But let's keep reading. And shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Well, that's definitely Egypt. The Jews lived in a foreign land as strangers. They were serving somebody, and they were being afflicted as slaves. So that's definitely Egypt. But notice how long. 400 years. What is this 400 years? Look at verse 16. But in the what? Fourth generation, they shall come hither again. So you'll notice right here that Genesis chapter 15... 100 years equals one generation. It says 400 years, that equals to four generations. So a generation could be 100 years. So if a generation is 100 years, we go 1948 plus 100, and the date could be this, 2048. But it doesn't change the fact that it's going to be in my lifetime, see? <laughs> Or, another one, look at the book of Genesis again, chapter 5. Or it could be this, Genesis chapter 5. I don't know if creationists know this, they should. One of the greatest evidences of evolution is they try to prove a young earth. But when you try to prove a young earth, then you can see that you're not too far, actually. Because when they try to prove a young earth right here, what they do is this. They mention that the magnetism of the earth is that it's weakening. And actually, when you go by the rate of how the magnetism is getting weaker, you know how much the earth is younger than? 10,000 years. If, if it went beyond that, the mag magnetism would have become so weak that the planet would have been gone. We would not have existed. So here's the thing. If that's the case, then you can see we're not too far ahead throughout the past several thousand years of human history. That's good. So I'm not saying this. So even if you don't believe all this, even scientifically, scientifically speaking, you can see we're not too far. And creationists believe this. I'm saying every single creationist believes this. They use this as one of their greatest evidences against evolution. Okay, um, let's look at Genesis chapter 5 and verse 21. And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat what? Methuselah. Methuselah. Do you know what Methuselah means? That name means? When he dies. So a particular person, right? So when he dies, what? God's judgment. It shall be sent. What did God say about the coming of the Son of Man? Likened to the days of Noah. And we see here this particular generation when he dies, what? It was sent. So it can either be this. 
if this one, this 100 years, is not going to make it, it could also mean this one then. It could also mean this one. That there is a particular generation in the days of Noah. And when that, pers when that person dies, whoever was there in 1948, when that person dies, what? It shall be sent. The second coming of Jesus Christ. So here's the thing. We don't know how long the generation is, but these are all the possibilities I'm going to show you. So even though we don't know how long this generation is, we do know one thing is that we, we are not far and that rapture is coming soon. Doesn't this kind of make you think now that am I ready for the rapture? Am I ready to, do, to give my life to the Lord? Am I ready to be judged by Him when I see His face? When He raptures you up to glory, and then He's going to judge you, what have you done for me? Are you going to tell Him, well, I didn't know that the rapture was going to happen today, God. It just happened unexpectedly on the middle of my lunch. If you told me when, then I would have prepared. No, don't give that kind of excuse, alright? Don't give that kind of excuse, alright? The thing is this, is that the Lord showed you so many things happening in our world that you know it's coming soon. So because of that, you got no excuse, and you better get to work for Him. You better get to work for Jesus Christ. Start reading your Bible. Start praying. If you're not saved, you better get saved first of all. Get saved right now. And then get involved in a Bible-believing church. A lot of people aren't doing that. Find a Bible-believing church. Get involved in one. Because if you get involved in one, it will help you get to work. All right? It will help you get to work. You got opportunities in church that you can do. All right? That's why I'm not lazy. In my age, why would I become a pastor now? You know why? I, I don't have time. All right? I don't have time to live according to the pleasures of the world. I want to encourage young people out there too is this, is that you guys are wasting your lives trying to dig up things in the world. All right? I've, I've been through the temptations, you know? I've been through the temptations of I want to do this as a young person. I want to spend fun times. I've thought about as church is boring and I want to do all these worldly things. But I'm going to tell you one thing, man. What good is it if you had all the world and then the rapture sounded right now? You're going to take the world with you? You can't take the world with you. And guess what? In eternity, God could have given you five crowns, gold, silver, precious stones, cities to rule in this world, an inheritance of all the universe, but He can't give it to you. Why? Because you were too busy digging up things of this world that you can't take with you for eternity anyway. That's why I gladly gave up the world. You know why? I've got so much to do for Him. Amen. Now get to work. <laughs>